too, and, and something I think that we are all sad about is the bombshell that was dropped on the Seattle Mariners on Tuesday this week. It was announced that Robinson Cano was going to be suspended 80 games for failing a drug test, pretty much. Uh, the short version of the story, Cano failed a test in the offseason, mind you, for a diuretic. It's, it's essentially a masking agent, so the suspension is treated uh, like a PED suspension. Ultimately, Major League Baseball was able to you know, confirm that the diuretic was used to cover up PEDs. They haven't announced which one, but uh, Cano, it's just kind of the whole timing of it was super weird because Cano got hit in the hand and was going to be out a significant amount of time anyway uh, yes. after Sunday's game. And then once it was announced that he was going to be suspended, he just kind of said, all right, I'm not going to appeal it then because I'm going to miss time anyway. So mm-hmm. he punked out there. And then it's kind of wild that players can spend or can serve a suspension while being on the disabled list, uh, it, it's like you know taking vacation from work when you go to jail. I don't think yeah. that should actually be a thing. I'd agree with you. So go go ahead, Seth. Give me your thoughts because we haven't talked much about this this week. We knew we would talk about it today. Uh, Cano just gets I, busted and he's out for a long, long time now till about mid-August. Obviously, the whole thing is very shocking to I think the whole team, but also to the fan base. But personally, I'm I'm not really sad so much as actually angry about this you're paying this guy 24 million dollars granted he's not going to get paid during the suspension right however you're paying him a significant amount of money to be your franchise player and ultimately to help you break the longest playoff drought in the mlb right now and he's going to be missing half of the year now right and it it's really disappointing that one player making a stupid decision can really single-handedly ruin your playoff chances and that's what Cano did yeah especially in the immediate future because we've talked about it you know at length on this show before that the Mariners have been strong to start out this year right they They were in contention we're starting to kind of look at them and go okay what can they do how can they add and you know worried about how they can add and make the team better while the biggest subtraction they could have taken with Robinson Cano being out until mid-August happens And, of course, we talk about he's able to serve his uh, suspension while he's on the DL. He's also ineligible for the playoffs. Yes. So if the Mariners are able to make it this year, they're going to go in without Cano. So just think about, like, the timing of how weird it is. He's going to be gone until mid-August. He can rejoin the team and, like, help them on a stretch run where it could be crucial. they're still relevant. Those final 40 games, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, if they do get in and it's likely going to be that one-game playoff, and he's going to be out again. Sorry, watch from the clubhouse yep. or the suite or wherever. So, I mean, it's just it's just crazy. It's really disappointing to me that with the construction of the Mariners roster, you knew you were going to have to win a lot of slugfests this year. Mm-hmm. And looking at the Mariners lineup the last couple days, granted Nelson Cruz has also been out with, I believe, a bruise on his foot. Yeah, something like that. So your lineup has just been absolutely punchless the last couple nights. Yep. It's already making an immediate dramatic effect. Yep. Yep. I, I, it's, you know, we've seen that and we could talk about, you know, the changes that the team is going to make, it, you know, unironically or not, a gold glove second baseman was playing outfield for the Mariners this year it, in D Gordon. And he's going to slide back into second base and Guillermo Heredia is going to take over the duties in the outfield. Probably the right move. Or what do you think? I think you have to. Right. I mean, Gordon Beckham is a serviceable backup but certainly not somebody you want starting 100 games this year Mm -hmm. so I I absolutely think it's the right choice you have more outfield depth in the organization than you do at second base ultimately and you know you probably had to think you know who do we want to play more Guillermo Heredia or Gordon Beckham right that's what the decision is it's not a D Gordon moving thing it's a who's better than those two who do you want on the field and like you said Seth I think that you know Gordon Beckham solid player below average hitter solid defender well you're gonna put yep like we said a gold glove second baseman back at his natural position so that'll be interesting i don't even think they lose anything defensively i think they yeah. almost get better defensively without Cano i think, in that I think it'll be about the same defensively yeah yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and then you could you know we can also switch the conversation and talk long term uh brian kenny of mlb network called robinson cano uh, one of the 10 best second basemen to play the game ever so since like the beginning yeah. of time, as old as baseball is, Robinson Cano, one of the 10 best ever, and now people are talking about how he just tarnished his legacy and will not be in the Hall of Fame. Is that something that you care about necessarily? 
Or is it just kind of a, well, yeah, that, that also sucks, but right now I'm still mad that he's hurt the team. I would care about it if Cano had been a player who had come up through the Mariners organization and made this decision. Sure. But being a player who used to play for the Yankees and a person who would probably go into the Hall of Fame as a Yankee, I, I don't care so much that this hurts his chance of getting into the Hall. I think I'd agree with you on that as well. Um, have you Speaking of former Yankee, have you, have you seen the reports that, that, that have come out that the Yankees were a little bit timid to trying to re-sign Robinson Cano because they feared his relationship with PEDs? Do you buy into any of that kind it's, of talk? It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. I mean, he is good friends with uh, Alex Rodriguez, a couple of the other Yankee players who have used steroids in the past. So it makes for a good story, but at the end of the day, it's nothing but a, a headline and the Yankees trying to cover their butts saying, oh yeah, we knew about this. That's why the Mariners outbid us, even though we offered him $170 million. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I would agree with you. I think it's a stretch at best. You know, it, it becomes kind of, you know, smart alecky, I guess I'll say, and going, oh, connect yeah. these dots. Look, they knew this was going to happen. That's why they didn't want to offer him all that money and blah, 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 blah. So, um, and then the kicker on top of that was Mark Teixeira came out and say that he said that he wasn't surprised hmm. when he saw that Cano was hit with that suspension. A former teammate of Cano in New York, Mark Teixeira says, yeah, I kind of wasn't surprised. I don't think anybody really feels sorry for Cano. He's obviously a very talented hitter already. He didn't need to turn to PEDs, and right. he did. He really has nobody else to blame except himself, and he's just throwing excuses out there for why he did this but at the end of the day there is no justification for trying to cheat right right there is no justification at all and it's just kind of a it's crazy it's great i mean it is it just came out of nowhere really yeah the timing of it is what drives me i think the most crazy like we talked about failed it in the off season played a strong first month and a couple weeks of the 2018 season knowing that he was working through appealing this suspension and then gets hit in the hand and says okay i guess i won't appeal this anymore like what what is that <laughs> what <laughs> he just gave up yep so he's guilty we all know he's guilty yes the statement he came out and and, and wrote is something anyone could have written it sounds like every it's i'm sorry cliche. statement right yeah. uh the closing line which gets me every time said something like um uh, I obviously wish now that I had been more careful or something like that. It's like, yeah. I wish I'd been more careful and not intentionally taken this illegal substance. Right. <laughs> exactly. We all wish you were more careful. Like, what kind of a line is that? Why is that even in there? It, yeah. It, Just because it sounds nice. Yeah. Been more careful. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that really mean when you knew? Yeah. It's, it's a mess right now. I guess if we're going to try and find any silver lining here with this situation, it's that with the Mariners not having to pay Cano his salary while he's suspended, they will have more uh, money to direct towards any other acquisitions that they want to make come the July uh, trade deadline. Yeah, and, and realistically, it's probably just a three-month investment. Yeah. Right? So if someone has a, has a bad contract that a team doesn't want to pay out near the end of this season, the M's can go, oh, we'll do that, and, and pick up a pitcher they might need or now an outfield bat that they might need. I yep. mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. There's a lot of layers to this that are still to be determined. Yep. We could talk about how, you know, Robinson Cano, how will he be received when he comes back with the team? Because it, it's an interesting dynamic. You know, Nelson Cruz also hit with a PED suspension. D. Gordon also hit with a PED suspension. The difference is those weren't done while, he, while they were Mariners. Yep. Now, Robinson Cano, as a Mariner, gets caught, however you want to phrase it, gets in trouble, right? Uh you think it'll be a good exercise for the city and for the fans' forgiveness? You think they'll heckle and boo? Like, what? What? how does he return to the Mariners after it's all said and done? I think it'll be a pretty mixed reaction. I think most of the Seattle fans are not too over-the-top intense. I think he will certainly face some boos, especially if the Mariners are irrelevant by the time he's coming back. But if the Mariners are still hanging in there, then I think they'll they'll support him coming back into the lineup. I think that's the right caveat to it. I think if they're winning, you're obviously going to welcome him back and go, hey, here's another bat. I mean, you know, steroid jokes aside, I mean, the, the guy can hit. Yep. Right? So you're, you're excited about that extra bat. And then uh, if they're losing, though, I think he should hear it every time he plays a safe go field because... I'd know, agree. They're, they're a lot worse off without him than they are with him. So Yeah. 